Hello Abacus user, welcome to Abacus Acumen for quick and sound learning. Uh, today's session we are going to do on a nonlinear buckling. Now uh, you might be thinking why we are doing uh, multiple video on the nonlinear buckling. Now the reason we are done a nonlinear buckling again on a cylindrical structure because uh, after doing uh, nonlinear buckling on column we got some email which say can we do uh, based on our axis symmetry video, can we do axis symmetry, use a axis symmetry element or the symmetry uh, boundary condition when you do a nonlinear buckling and it is not recommended because uh, the actual structured buckle in a shape, uh, a mode shape or hygiene mode which may not be a symmetric. So you cannot use a symmetry or axis symmetry element when you do a nonlinear buckling. We'll just create one video which will mention actually where we can use axis symmetry and symmetry uh, boundary condition and what type of analysis. We'll have a separate video that. But today we are going to do a cylindrical structure and uh, we are trying to connect our simulation to the more reality part. So what, what we are done, we are taking a more realistic uh, uh, buckling of uh, aluminum cylinder processing uh, some processing uh, uh, food processing cylinder which under the actual uh, load got buckle and we just try to capture whether whether we get a uh, similar deformation mode what we see in actuality so that's what actually we are going to do we are connecting abacus simulation to reality that's what actually the use of uh, simulation tool once you do simulation it has to predict the actual reality and in in this case if you, uh, we do this modeling on the cylindrical nonlinear buckling you can really uh, connect that it really capture what happened to the actuality so this is we are going to do uh, the typical what nonlinear buckling modeling method in abacus standard is you built a model you do a linear buckling um, you can ask number of uh, buckling mode three or four or five then you can use different iteration parameter and then after doing that just add this node node fill node fill is again a fill file which will have displacement pattern of this eigen mode shape of the linear buckling we are going to call this file here we are going to you call this file to add imperfection in nonlinear buckling so nonlinear buckling the uh, one particular lo load structure get collapsed then we want to check how is the post buckling behavior sometime you have to go through snap through behavior so you cannot uh, use a generic uh, star static nonlinear um, uh, analysis to do this you have to use um, Rix method now Rix method is also called uh, arc line method this arc line method will capture what is a, 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 a post buckling behavior uh, of the structure so you cannot uh, do a nonlinear buckling with a uh, star static general using NL geom or contact. You have to use a risk method, which will really capture this uh, um, uh, post buckling behavior. Output will be nonlinear buckling load, and then how the structure is going to buckle. So now this particular is we almost capture the reality. I just uh, terminate the run in case we continue this run with proper contact you can get all this deformation uh, match with this again i am not sure of this structure dimension but i i just um, uh, check in the paper it is l by d ratio is one so diameter to length ratio is one so i just try to model that and then then we have to capture this how it's going to buckle um, the one point which I mentioned that after this buckling behavior if you want to capture the snap through behavior how the load drops and after contact code, you need to use a risk method or arc line method again uh, the the linear buckling is on the Euler formula uh, which always predict uh, higher buckling loads it is a overestimated buckling load so it is good to estimate what is a buckling load for a typical structure but if you use this linear buckling to do your design we are going to give a very overestimated load the structure get buckle at quite lower load so for initial estimation we recommended to do a non-linear buckling get what is the the the, the Euler buckling load but we always recommended to go a non-linear buckling because the 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 reduction in the load with non-linear buckling is significant compared to the Euler equation and then like if you define contact then you can capture the snap through behavior this is a problem we are going to do bottom will be the end caster fixed condition top will be pin condition again mention LOID ratio 1 so diameter is 500 millimeter length will be 500 millimeter that's what actually we want to do aluminum structure we have taken 
100 is will be the the MPA modulus. We are going to use ten millimeter Newton MPA uh, Newton second. So this will be MPA. This will be also MPA. 160. What we are taking as a yield. 340. We are saying plastic strain is 0.3. Uh, if you want, you can define a contact, but we are not going to con do put contact, and we are not going to capture all the snap through behavior. So uh, again, quickly using star buckle, we are going to do it. We'll use subspace subspace method because we are just asking few eigen mode. It is faster. In case you want to have large number of eigen mode, we recommended to go to Langhorne. So now we'll quickly. So this is exactly what we are going to do. We are going to put structure, put all imperfection, get buckling done, and then try to capture whether we get a similar buckling behavior what you see in the realistic uh, data. So let me clear it off all these things. Let me set the directory. So we'll first quickly create a cylinder. So it will be cylinder. So uh, it will be deformable part shell. We are going to do using extrusion. Approximate start we are putting thousand. Then I'll just first uh, pick up first. I'll put a zero comma zero. I always uh, put zero comma zero coordinate and then then I put it and then my cylinder radius is two fifty. So I'll just put this and then then I'll just extrude this by five hundred millimeter. So we are done the structure. Now I'll quickly go to the property. I'll create aluminum property. So it will be 73, 100. Poison's ratio will be 0 0.35. We're going to add a plasticity data. 340 and 0 0.3. Uh, will create a section will be 2 mm thick we'll assign this to our geometry so we have done that and then we'll quickly create the instance in assembly we'll say we are done with this so quickly we'll go to meshing part uh, this is what uh, it gives error make independent or dependent part so I was trying to do in assembly actually you have to do in part so you select uh, sweep what I, I, I take it for this type of structure it is good for this and then then we are going to use 5 I'll just use around 10 And then we'll select this uh, S4R. We'll quickly mesh it. So for 10 millimeter, we are done. You can do a finer mesh also, but uh, for this is a tutorial, we are using 10. Uh, if you use a finer, then you can capture more uh, realistic deformation pattern. Now we are defined this. Now uh, I'll do two things. I'll just create a two reference point. And that we reference point will do just to do a tie connection to the outer peripheral node at the top and bottom. This will be easy to apply load and boundary condition. That's all. So I put zero comma zero at the center at the bottom, and then I'll have a zero comma zero comma five hundred watt actually I'll put. So I get the other point. Now once I gone this, I can use this. Uh, I'll just quickly create the node set. Now because node set I'm creating because it will be easy to connect to the uh, bottom and the top. So, so I'll create node set top so I'm going to use this and then, then select. So let me check. We are selected, so done. So I have top. I'll create similarly for bottom. Done. 
done so we have created that now let's let's quickly create uh, let's let let's uh, uh, put constraint so I am going to put rigid body constraint say top continue it will be tie connection I am going to select by set top and then I am going to select the reference point at this 2 so this is the first we are defined the, the constraint uh, constraint means we are just uh, put a connection so it's a, a reference point we are connected to peripheral node just to have a easy of uh, putting boundary condition and load Uh, I put uh, select tie and then I'll select it go to set I'll select the bottom and then I'll select RP1 reference point 1 I'm going to select no I think I think it's wrong so uh, first put tie then select to the it is it is it is selected wrong way so we'll create again so I say bottom we go to rigid then we say tie we click this and then we I select bottom and then this will be reference point this and say okay so that way we created both now we have two reference point connected now we will quickly put a boundary condition for this as I mentioned the bottom will be end caster so I selected the bottom one will put end caster and then top one is a pin condition so I'm going to uh, constant in X and Y but Z will be uh, free to move done and then we have defined that now what remain nothing now uh, one thing actually I given uh, just to go to the property just just one minute just a clarification I put plasticity data but for linear buckling it is not going to take the plasticity data it is it will be based on this elastic modulus plastic data I just put it because the next fire next when uh, we go to nonlinear buckling I need a plasticity data so that's what actually we are done uh, we'll quickly create a step it will be linear buckling Uh, it will be linear protrusion step so it will be a clean step then we are going to put three six vectors per iteration I'm putting 300 just to be on safer side now I'll just do one more thing I have to just apply the one linear concentrated load so done and that will be 0 comma 0 just one unit load I am going to do so whatever the buckling load I am going to get is a multiplication of this so I just put one dismiss and then then you can see this is negative z direction we put this load now everything is there will create a job we create a linear buckling we'll go for a quick data check always recommended to go to data check so if you have any pre-processor related issue you can quickly find out so it's uh, checking background just one thing once everything is fine we are going to add this node file comma u that's what actually we are going to add a command file this so input file done pre-processor no issue so so it's done so what I'm going to do I'm going to open in a text pad and in that file I'll just put control N so 
I am just just going to add this boundary condition, which I just uh, for time saving purpose add star node fill. It's a fill file for a disp uh, displacement mode, which will capture to put an imperfection. So I done this. Uh, so I added to file. Now I'll I'll let me run it from. I generally I'm going to run it from command prompt. So I put to have a command prompt, and then I'll just put cd. ABQ six one four five J is equal to and we'll put an interactive just yes. So let's wait for the results for this so it will just go to the pre and once it's got to pre then it will go to standard so it's going to standard just 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 wait for uh, wait for the results and then we can discuss so guys uh, uh, when we submit a run actually runs come out with error the uh, on the number of iterations so i'll just tell you what changes i done so in step uh you just uh, put this as a 3000 actually it just got converged at 6 uh, 645 iteration 6 647 iteration so what what we suggest earlier we mentioned uh you should be have 3 300 you can have this till 1000 1000 will be good good number so just results are out so let's just check actually the how the linear buckling mode looks like so let me put it on the no state and then uh, let me put legend also so you see first one is 1.15 e power 06 newton so almost like a 1000 uh, 200 newton is what actually the buckling uh, load is there this is first mode Let's check for a second mode. It is similar line, but the mode shape is also look similar. It's a bit different compared to the first one. The other way, it's it just uh, got a phase change. So, if you look into this, this is the phase. Then it just ch change the phase by 90 degree. Uh, the similar phase what you see. So, all are around 1.2. All three modes. So now now we'll do do a setup for a nonlinear buckling. now i'll just quickly go through the steps so we use this we have fill file we we'll use recall this fill file and we'll change the st step so number one things what we'll do i'll just go to job i'll just delete this i don't read now i'll go to step i'll delete this step i don't 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 want this linear we are going to make a non linear so uh, i'll also go to the load so which step load is also gone good so i'll because it's a linear protrusion and the, the load was inside that step it gone we'll create non linear buckling we'll go to static risk nl jam on and then increment will have a maximum 1 so we are going to check in terms of 1000 will be enough Uh, initial we are going to put 0.01 or 0.001. That's what actually we'll start with. 0.1 percent uh, load, thousand. That's what actually we'll use. Uh, we'll already put NL jam on, and then we are not using any stopping criteria. In case you want to have use, you can use the stopping criteria. So we put that. now number one things load i am going to because it's already over estimated load is there so we'll just try to put 1.2 so i just selected that point done now 0 comma 0 minus it what 1.14 but we'll just put 1.2 just to see if we can really go through and capture all this uh, uh 
you can have thousand also so 1.2 is just just a bit higher road we are going to get proportional uh, what is the buckling factor so i just put that mm, let me save this file as nonlinear buckling and uh, we'll just create a job uh, nonlinear buckling continue and then we'll just have a quick data check so once data check is done we are sure then we'll just add imperfection into the model and then we'll submit for the final run and uh, check how how the deformation shape looks like so it's preprocessor done so i guess so done so just quickly go to non linear buckling input file i'm going to open in text pad oh no uh, let me open it in text pad control and uh, we we use risk method we put nl jam on 1000 we have just applied a load based on this we have this now we'll just just add a imperfection we'll just add a imperfection before the step you can also add the imperfection from here so model you go to edit keyword and then you can you can add imperfection here and just before the 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 step you can add after this and add this it's a uh, different uh, you can add from there i prefer to add from the text pad the reason for this is again it give a lot of handy to do this so i'm just copy here and then then we'll uh, just explain what it is so we put a star imperfection we want to call the fill file so the fill file name is a linear uh, buckling this is the fill file uh, the uh, fill file of with this name we are going to call then step one we'll have first mode which we are putting thickness is two millimeters so one uh, one tenth of that we are putting for the first one point two so whatever the deflection you get in the first mode for that it will add 0.2 multiply by 0.2 and that deform shape a slight imperfection it will add second will be mode will be half of the first one third will be the half of the second one again this is the quite research area whenever you do your actual problem you have to really do a more imperfection sensitivity study to check how your model behaves so we have done that so let's quickly submit this run now nonlinear buckling so I'm going to say ABQ 6145J is equal to I'm going to use two CPU and uh, let's check how, how it looks like. So we submitted the run. So we'll see how deform shape you get for a cylindrical structure where you have l by d ratio 1 so your aspect ratio is 1 so let let's check whether there is any issue with pre if there is no so pre is done it gone to standard so just 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 wait for the results and then we can discuss on the results So guys, welcome back. Um, I just terminated the run because it was just going a lot of iteration. So uh, here is the results. So you can see almost we capture the more realistic deformation shape. So it start and then structure already got buckle and then you see some post buckling behavior. So it just give up. Structure almost give up. So just let me set this to 300 or 280 and then, then we'll check. So you have imperfection with imperfection here then you see it start it's not symmetric buckling. You see just, just structure got buckle. And then what is the buckling load? We applied 1.2 e power 06 so check what is the buckling load so you go to history output and in history output you can go to 
load proportionally plot so you can see almost 34 percent it just give up structure got give up and then this is most more uh, post buckling behavior so this is a good example to uh, and then you see the deformation shape you almost got a similar good deformation like actual structure so going back you can capture some of this so it's a good learning for you to do this type of problem uh, again don't forget to like us or subscribe us we need your support to take this project forward also a lot of people ask us for an input file and then uh, now onwards would like to give an input file on no loss no profit basis uh, we recommended you to watch our video and then reproduce it at your end but in case somebody want this input file it will be available for uh, no loss no profit basis on minimum amount so thank you very much for watching this don't forget to like us and subscribe us thank you bye bye